Hey guys, hope you're doing really well this morning. We're going to get started in just a few moments. If you guys are new to the show, make sure to follow us on the socials down here on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, right here where you're probably watching, and Discord. Of course, we are live on Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, and YouTube. I don't know if you mentioned that. If you got any questions, pop them in the chat. I'll be right with you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Of course, I am your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic wherever you happen to be tuning in from. And of course, we are broadcasting live as we do every day on YouTube, Twitch, DLive, and Facebook Live. Now we are really getting out there. 
Hopefully you guys are doing really good. I seem to have all my restream chats connected, so we are ready to go. If you guys have any questions, make sure to throw them in the chat section as we progress along. Of course, we're going to do as we always do. We're going to break down the markets, talk about trade psychology and discipline, as well as strategies, and take your requests. So if you have anything you'd like us to look at, let us know. A couple interesting things in the news we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the lack of conspiracy theories and market inefficiency in Bitcoin. This is kind of inspired by the recent investigation conducted by Bitstamp into their recent 5,000 Bitcoin market order to see if it was in some sense manipulation. Uh, and if by manipulation, they mean a profitable movement to liquidate longs on BitMEX, then yes. Uh, we're also going to talk about a little bit of an update in the Bitfinex and Tether case, obviously then moving to dismiss their case due to the New York AG's lack of jurisdiction. And a little update for anybody that's holding PHX, PHX switching to the Binance chain, switching from NEO. So they will now be rebranded as PHB. So anybody that was holding PHX or in a PHX trade a couple days ago, you woke up this morning to your ticker symbol being disabled and a nice, nice little announcement from Binance. So we're going to break that down as well as look at the markets, guys. So Glad to see you on DLive. Me too. The only thing I don't like about DLive so far, Anthony Littlewood, good to see you there, brother, and MT Coiner. The only thing that's a little bit, uh, I don't know if this is a feature that I don't understand how to do, or if um, this is just something that they do not offer yet. But on Twitch you, and YouTube, you can pop the chat window out so I can organize it on my screen here where I view the chat uh, quite seamlessly so I can have everything open quite nicely. The other way, uh, but DLive doesn't seem to support that at this point in time. So I literally have to have the page open and kind of zoom in onto the chat. So anyways, thank you guys for watching us. Let's get right into this. All right, here we go. We're going to start off with the investigation, or should I say lack therefore, uh, uh, or should I say the lack or the lack of necessity of an investigation, whatever this might possibly mean. Uh, so this is from uh, Cointelegraph. Bitstamp starts investigation after a large BTC sell leads to 250 million liquidated on BitMEX. Like that's anything new. All right, so we'll go down here a little bit. And this is basically saying that Bitstamp has launched an investigation. Obviously, we covered that large movement to the downside. That was actually a movement that we in the trading group were short on. Again, not because we were predicting or had inside information, merely because the market will tell you which direction to go if you use your technical indicators properly. If you are on the right side of the trade, good things can happen. Now, obviously, as you guys know, we follow the trend. Typically, Per the PTP strategy, that is not an area that we would be looking for a short. However, as we evolve through PTP, there are discretionary, secondary, and tertiary elements we can add into this. The most important thing, as with all strategies, is that you must backtest its statistical efficiency over time. There are certain market conditions where you may take a counter trade, tr counter trend trade. However, I do not recommend that individuals do that. And that is uh, at least in the beginning, at least in the beginning. And by the beginning, I generally mean the first year to two years of their trading. Because it takes, if you have the proper mentoring and guidance and the right strategy and you put in the time and the grind to develop your system, it takes about three to six months to develop that profitable mindset, that winning mindset, that knowledge that you are a profitable trader, that when you sit down at your terminal and you execute a position, on average, you make more money than you lose. You know that over time, your equity curve grows instead of diminishes. And you don't have to sit there and have sleepless nights and count wishes or fishes, none of that. You just know because it's verifiable, statistical, and you can test it and you can see how something works. Another thing that I want to cover too is because I had a comment from a... Um, uh, from a new client. And he said, you know, we were talking about trend following strategies and back testing. And one of the comments that he made was, and I've come across this quite a bit, but I've never really addressed it. So I want to address it here. Uh, and I know this has nothing to do with Bitstamp, but you know, he, his comment was, well, look, man, I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of biased or, or jaded against back testing because how do we know that the market is going to um, perform the same in the future, right? How can we, how can we have confidence when we test a strategy into the past and know that it's going to be profitable in the future. And my answer to that is this. Listen, market conditions overall are not dramatically different, right? The market trends to the upside, the market trends to the downside, you have pullbacks, you have corrections. And this is true across any asset class and cryptocurrency is no different. If you go back to the beginning of Bitcoin's history, 
The charts respond fantastically to technical analysis. And it wouldn't matter if you were in the moment or if you're doing it in the past, right? The market conditions, again, the argument that I disagree with, but I guess the argument that is kind of underlying this to a degree is that the market does repeat in a somewhat fractal manner. Now, I don't want to get too deep into that because you guys know how I feel about things like chart patterns and fractals. Essentially, every moment in the market is unique. However, over time, markets respond to technical analysis in predictable patterns. So my theory behind this, and it's not really, a, it is a theory, but it's a theory that I've tested because this is, again, forms the backbone of the strategy that I use to trade professionally, is if you have a strategy that you see works well in the past, odds are, right, and again, you can test this with future testing, which is something we'll be covering in PTP, how to do back testing and future testing or current testing, how to actually take the strategy that you've developed that works well in the past and actually test it now, i.e. through paper trading or, um, or small capital trading. I prefer the small capital trading. Again, that way that you will actually have your psychology in the mix. When you actually have money on the line, you tend to get uh, aberrant, psycho aberrant, that's not the right word, uh, psychology, your mind tends to kick in. And again, the biggest enemy to your trading success is often yourself. So again, that is why with mentoring and with guidance and with the right system, you want to be trading your system live under real market conditions with your real money on the line, whether it's $1,000 or whether it's $100. So anyways, uh, and also, really, the underlying concept that I've come to test and discover and, and, and know is that if something works well in the past, odds are it will work good now. It will work better if you tweak it, right? You can have discretionary... You can have discretionary filters that you put on any strategy to either ramp up the strategy or pull back the strategy. Or maybe if you look at the weekly trend, for example, you're not really looking to take shorts or you, so you disable that part of your strategy. Or if the weekly trend is bull, you know, for example, right, there are different little elements and tweaking that you can do based on current market conditions. And you can do that and discover those elements through top-down analysis, looking at the larger macro trend and looking to trade the micro to meso trend inside that larger time frame. However, if you have something that was really good in the past, odds are that it's going to be terrible now or not work at all is very small in my opinion, right? Generally, if it's going to work really well in the past, it's going to at, at worst work okay now, right? And you can optimize that with a little bit of tweaking. And again, if the market did not behave in predictable patterns, if we were not, if we were not able to use technical analysis, A, I wouldn't be here, I would be out of a job, and B... Anybody that used algorithmic trading would be out of a job because the market algorithmic bots can try to predict the future, can try to react to market conditions, but overall they're structured and programmed to respond to certain patterns. That's how it works. So that's my thought on that. Back testing absolutely works. It is the best and in my opinion, only way to begin your start as a trader. Um, you cannot take anything that anybody teaches you, me, anybody, and just take it on faith. You need to take your strategy, you need to go back in time, and you need to test it thoroughly, preferably for at least a period of two years. Preferably for at least a period of two years. I do my back testing on the, for cryptocurrency on the BTC USD bitstamp chart. I go all the way back to the beginning of the first price that was listed on BTC USD, and I start from there. Now, I also, again, you guys know that I utilize PineScript Strategy Tester to test my strategies. However, that's not going to get me the whole way there. The reason that I utilize Pine Pine uh, Strategy Tester is that it allows me to see fairly quickly whether something's good or bad. If it's bad, there's really not a whole lot that I'm going to be able to do unless I wrote the code wrong. If it's good, then all I need to do is optimize it to make it great. And if I can't make it great, well, then it gets thrown out into the pile because I have something that's great, so I have a baseline to compare it against. Again, I'm always looking to improve and add things into my algorithm. So, uh, that's going to correspond to Minx, and I wanted to touch on Minx because I posted some updates. So that should be going live here any day now. I've put a lot of work onto this. I've been working on Minx for about two months. I've sneak peeked it a few times here on the stream. I'm going to sneak peek it a little bit more extensively later on or throughout the course of this week for the premium subscribers in the group. Uh, and I went ahead and did the Pine Test Strategy Tester, and it outperformed the Bitcoin market by a factor of four. Right. So when people kind of look at those numbers and again, I got, you know, I, I, I got this as well, again, from a very person, from a person that I respect a lot, you know, they sent me a message. They said, hey, you do realize that you have to calculate market and slippage into your pine testing. And yes, I did do that um, because that's was that's that's often a first stumbling block uh, in pine. Most people will not um, most people will not calculate for market or slippage. 
and they'll end up having a very good ROI or a good profit factor. Again, you want to be looking at profit factor and net profit, not necessarily your hit rate. Your hit rate can be quite low, but if it's a profitable strategy, that's all that matters. Um, but there are certain things that Pine is not very good at. So you always want to take that. You always want to use Pine to kind of expedite your initial testing. And then you still need to go back and manually test everything. Um, I, I don't know of any method that's superior. I don't trust a bot uh, or any program at this point in my life uh, to be able to automate that process for me. I still use a spreadsheet. I still use pen and paper to go back and fully backtest a strategy because there are going to be discretionary elements of any trading style as long as they're rules-based, right? Discretionary rules-based, not discretionary. Well, it depends on how I feel. Discretionary rules based uh, that's going to let you enter and exit into a position or situation qu differently, right? So for example, in our system, we can have a period where we allow our indicators to catch up uh, after a signal is generated, right? So it's very hard to program that into pine, at least, or perhaps my skills are just lacking. And if you know how to fix those skills, feel free to contact me. Uh, but I'm, um, but anyways, so uh, pretty excited about Mink, so looking forward to that. But the nice thing about it is that I have manually back tested it, and it outperforms the market by a factor of five. So there are elements in Pine that are just not washing through into the manual back testing. So Pine can be really helpful. Strategy tester can be really helpful, or expert advisor and MetaTrader, if you're using MetaTrader, can be really helpful to um, expedite your initial testing, right? You have a concept, you slap some code together, you slap some indicators together, and you just want to see if it works overall. You design a set of rules, you design a system, you design a structure, and you say, go forth and conquer. And you can just kind of click a button and see, does this even work at all, right? And if it doesn't work at all, and you've got the code right, and you've got the rules right, well, you can try to mess with the rules. But if you really can't make something out of it, then scrap it, start fresh. Whereas Manually backtesting can take a while, a few hours at least, where you have to actually go through and go through the charts manually and see, okay, that trade was a winner, that trade was a loser, here's what I would have taken profit, here's what I would have taken a loss. Uh, that can be a lengthy process. Like, for example, I did about five, I put about five hours of just manual backtesting into Minx over the last two months, right? Again, it doesn't really take that long to do. I've done multiple sessions on it every time I've upgraded it, uh, and Pine helps to expedite that process. So anyways, moving on. Uh, let's get back to the matter at hand. Bitstamp has reported, Bitstamp reported, blah, blah, blah. Uh, obviously we know that there was a large sell order in Bitcoin. And again, this was reported quite uh, incorrectly uh, among a lot of YouTubers and news and all that stuff. They all said it was Bitfinex. Of course, it has to be Bitfinex who, who did this massive manipulation. And again, you guys know I feel about Bitfinex. I'm pretty critical about them, but it was on Bitstamp, right? Verifiable. You can go look at the order book. Uh, so Bitstamp had a 5,000 BTC sell order, caused about, what was it, $250 million in liquidations, long liquidations on BitMEX. Again, we can see that on tensor charts, or you, again, you can just go look at the liquidation log, uh, whether you're using Datamish or tensor charts or you know, uh, CoinFarm. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I don't think CoinFarm shows liquidations. I correct myself. So while the company has not specified the details of the transaction, the price of Bitcoin had plummeted about 20% from around $7,800 to as low as 6250 uh, $6, in less than 30 minutes earlier on the day, according to data from TradingView, Trading View, the trading analytics platform, which we do use. Briefly after the crash, Bitcoin's price has surged back but stabilized below 7400 Why? Because of arbitrage bots. Uh, we went over that. This We talked about this exactly the day this happened. We talked about exactly how it went down. Uh, Bitstamp reported that their platform was operating properly as designed. Now, uh, this is very similar. I don't know if you, how many of you guys are versed in like the um, archaic uh, elements. And by the way, let me pause for the cause. I am sorry, Wally. Thank you so much for the $20 donation. My good friend, GBU Professor Wally, coming through with the 20 saying, did I hear algorithmic bots? Bots for the win. This is an auto donation based on keywords. Congratulations for unlocking level one. Learn, earn, and don't get burned. Thank you so much, sir. Shout out to Gunbot University and Wally. You are one of the good ones, my brother. Uh, you said that was, uh, this is an auto donation based on keywords. Okay, hold on. Let me just wait a second. Um, algorithm, 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 algorithm. Okay, that's a hundred bucks, man. You better be true to your word. You better not have turned the bot off. <laughs> Play with you. Thank you, man. All right, so um, uh, let's see here. Now, what's interesting about what happened on Bitstamp is that it's very reminiscent. Again, I don't know how many of you are versed in like old archaic, like uh, Mount Gox type trading, if you guys were around back then. I wasn't actively trading cryptocurrency at that time, but I've done some extensive homework on the community uh, and the market at large. And there was what was known as the bear whale, right? So there was a time, there was a time in history when this exact same thing happened. Uh, the bear whale was slightly different. So um, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but I believe, I believe that Bitcoin was trading around the $1,000 mark, or perhaps it was lower than that. Uh, again, I, uh, I apologize about the numbers, but there was an incident in time. I believe this was 2000. Uh, hmm, 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 hm
mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> it's 2000 something, uh, where somebody executed a market order um, well below current price. And the liquidity at that point in time in the Bitcoin market, at least on that exchange, Mt. Gox, I believe it was, was so low that it took quite a long time for that order to be fulfilled, right? So you have current price and then somebody executing uh, an order that's way down here in the books and it took forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever for that to get filled. It was a big meme at the time. The bear whale needed to be defeated. The bear whale is dropping the price because obviously the price, the price dropped down. And because that bear whale just had that massive... Um, just had that massive sell order in there relative to Bitcoin's liquidity at that point in time, it was impossible for the price to move up. So price just stagnated at that level for a long time. And then finally, the bear whale was defeated. All, all of that Bitcoin that he was trying to sell was bought. And finally, price was able to go up and then come down and go up and go down and come up and go down. And that's how what price does. But uh, this obviously is quite similar to that. Uh, however, the liquidity in cryptocurrency is better now so that this happened lickety split. So again, not really the exact same thing. So this would have to be, for it to be identical, this would have to be a situation where somebody executed a market order below market value so large that price was unable to recover, like completely unable to recover. And I just don't think we have that large of a seller that is willing to sell at this point in time. There are very few people that are willing to sell Bitcoin overall at this level. So, um, and we're going to get to the whole point of this in just a second, but, um, uh, the rest of this is just nonsense. So I just wanted to point out that Bitstamp is launching an investigation into this. And then that's the lead in. The point of this and the reason why I want to talk about this is to talk about a main factor of conspiracy, right? So everybody wants to think that everybody who colludes with somebody else in cryptocurrency is doing something illegal or immoral or unethical or wrong or crazy or tinfoil hat or it's the Illuminati or it's the Freemasons or it's the Rothschilds. Nonsense. Nonsense. If you had the power in your hands to manipulate the market to profit yourself, there is a 99% chance that you would do so, okay? Most of the people who sit around and whine about manipulation are just individuals who are salty that they couldn't do it themselves. And again, I don't want to piss anybody off, although I don't mind pissing people off, but that's just my personal opinion. I really do think from a deeper perspective focusing on personal responsibility and improving your life and what you can do with your life rather than worry about what other people are doing, regardless of power dynamics, regardless of equilibrium, regardless of any of that nonsense that every, that honestly, millions and millions of people have fought and died for revolution throughout their whole lives. And as a crypto anarchist, there are good ways that I would like to see the future of humanity change. As somebody who holds very dear libertarian values of freedom and liberty, there are a lot of things things in society that I would like to change. However, I want you to take note of my personal journey, right? I have spent the last 10 years focusing on my career, my personal development, my knowledge, my skills, my ethics, my philosophy, my moral code, my discipline. And I believe I'm in a place now to where I can reach out and try to affect the larger world around me. I started with myself. I reached out with my to my family and created a good... I, 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 I repaired relationships in my family that had gone awry. I repaired friendships that had gone awry. I focused heavily on personal relationships like with my family and with my children, for example. And that is the, so myself, my family. Then I started working on my community in my local area, right? So again, I kind of used to be somewhat of a black sheep. I live in a small town. Now I'm fairly respected around here. Why? Because I just started focusing on being a good person and helping other people out not putting myself out, but just being overall a respectable member of society while doing my own thing. It's kind of unique to be able to be a respectable member of society and somebody that people look up to, but yet be able to make a living trading cryptocurrency. So you're able to be as counter trend as you want. You're able to be as edgy as you want, but just, you know, as Bill and Ted said, be excellent to one another. And in general, people are going to see that. But if you're walking around salty and mad at the world and lashing out at other people and, you know, not having a disciplined schedule and not really having control of your life, not having a goal, not having vision, not having focus, not really doing any personal development. And you want to sit around and, and whine about the Illuminati or alien moon, the, you know, the moon landing was faked or any, any, any other of that stuff, right? That just is words coming out of people's mouths, keeping them back from doing, uh, keeping them back from doing uh, positive 
beneficial, helpful things with their lives. I think that's completely counterproductive, right? There's nothing wrong. Again, I like talking about conspiracy theories. It's funny, right? Or it's fun or it's entertaining. And there's lots of stuff out there that, that is probable, right? There's lots of conspiracy conspiracy theories that I think are likely, okay? Like, don't get me started. That like, you know, don't get me started on central banks. However, that should not be your primary focus of life because you are never going to accomplish your goal of making the world a better place if you don't start first with yourself, right? Every major religion that is valid has said the same message. Every major philosophy that is valid has said the same thing. The growth to making the world a better place begins with personal development, right? So work on yourself. And the reason why, as a trader, I emphasize on this so much is that I think there's lots of young people who are watching today who are probably in that boat, who don't have a firm grasp on where they are, who they are, where they're going, or what they want to do. And trading fixed that for me. I don't want to say it fixed that for me, but trading was a instrument that allowed for the expansion of my personal development. Why? Because it focused me, it forced me to be disciplined, to be patient, to be calm, to be humble, to have a true desire to learn, and basically to tear down all my mental and emotional walls, throw all that nonsense out of stuff that I wanted to hold close to my heart because it made me feel comfortable and good and justified and realize that at the end of the day, there's what works and there's what doesn't. And it doesn't matter what I think. I completely, fr I, I let go of being able to think that I could predict the market, of being uh, egotistical enough to think that in somehow my analytical skills were so amazing that I could call tops and bottoms or anything. And I realized that all I needed to do was focus on something that generated consistent profit over time and execute proper risk management. Now, there's an element of discretion in there over time that allows me to take risk and capture good profits as well. Not that that is independent of my strategy. My strategy is mechanical, works by itself, and requires just following the system, I would say. So I think there's probably a lot of, of people in that position, and that's why I talk about this so much. So if you're out there, if you are one of those people, I think that trading can help you if you approach it with the right mindset. So uh, John's Family Vlogs, thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube. And uh, Kumazul, thank you so much for the follow on Twitch, my good friend. Uh, Felix77, thank you so much for the follow over on DLive there as well. I feel like I need to get Facebook pulled open here because I don't um, I don't know if these are going to like auto update. Maybe just a little bit. I don't know. Um, and yes, I think that is a I think that is a very good point. Uh, uh, Cryptopic is is yes, be aware, but don't despair. Uh, and the more that you work on yourself, the more you become aware of what you can actually do to change things. So if you think that the, the you know, the Rothschilds are running the Illuminati banking conspiracy around the world, okay, well, get to a position where you can actually do something, you know, don't be smoking weed on the corner and think that you're going to change the world. Not that I have anything against people smoking weed. I think that's totally cool. I don't consume substances myself, but again, cannabis is pretty medicinal and helpful for those who use it properly and has some beneficial psychoactive properties as well for those who want to expand their consciousness. Again, as long as you use it responsibly, blah, 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 blah. Um, anyways, uh, so the, there's a comment on here that I really want to highlight. And this comment is by, uh, Jeff Atkins. So I, this name sounds familiar to me. Of course, it's, it's probably a fairly common name. Uh, he left this comment on May 17th, 2019. So Jeff Atkins, if you are some way, somehow, somewhere, uh, listening to this show or hear this shout out to you, good sir, because this is an amazing comment that you make so succinct and correct. He says, this will continue to be a risk for investors who choose to use leverage. Forced liquidation is a normal part of the process, and until there is sufficient liquidity to absorb one whale's sell-off, we will continue to see these occurrences, nothing to really investigate, which is so true. There's nothing here to investigate. Somebody executed a large order. Who gives a rat's ass if it was a fat finger trade, if it was a bot error, if it was manipulation, if somebody had a huge short order open on BitMEX? It is what it is. Who cares, right? These things happen all the time. People get liquidated all the time. What does it really matter if there was a massive amount of liquidations, right? That just means a lot of people were on the wrong side of the trade and trading comes with losses. So you just have to be able to position size properly and uh, reduce your risk. So again, uh, is there any, and I get this question a lot. Well, Justin, how do you go to sleep at night like using soft stops and, and you know, not being able to just be wiped out by the market because I position size pro appropriately and I hedge against risk. So there's never any one trade. Again, that's one golden rule of trading is that if you, if you are trading, you never allow one position to put your account in the red. Never, 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 never. It's never worth 
throwing all your eggs in one basket and thinking that this trade has got to make me rich. And so many people do that, especially people with a small amount of capital. And they don't understand that that so people with not a lot of capital they they want to get rich they've heard the bitcoin you know get rich style they've heard of like coin daddy and they think that they're just going to get cryptocurrency and go to bitmex and make it big it's not going to happen it's just not going to happen 90 to 99% 90 to 99% of traders lose money and there's a few key reasons for that lack of education lack of patience lack of discipline lack of proper strategy you can over time make very good profit and wealth as i have from trading crypto forex equity whatever you want to trade but you have to have the right approach coming in. If you only have $500, you need to treat that $500 like it's $500,000, okay? It doesn't matter if you are only earning 20 to 30% on that $500 per year. If you wanna be a professional trader, those skills can carry you forward into the future. You can show those skills to a prop shop, to investors, to family and friends, and individuals will give you money to trade as long as you treat that money with respect. You don't deserve to make money if you only have $500 and think to yourself, well, I only have $500, so I'm going to do everything wrong. I'm going to take massive risk. I'm going to blow out my account at the slightest sneeze that Bitcoin makes. You're going to lose money and you're going to deserve to lose money because you approached the market disrespectfully. You approached your own self with disrespect. You approached your money with disrespect. You have to respect your capital because at the end of the day, it's you and your capital against the rest of the market. It's a zero sum game. It's you in a battle for your capital growth with your capital and your mind against the rest of the market who are out to take your capital. So if you disrespect your capital because, oh, it's only 500 bucks, so I'm just gonna go 50X on this trade, you know, 75% of my account, huge stop loss. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Just saw Hillary flashing the white supremacist OK sign five times in two minutes. Get her out. <sighs> oh, shoot, man. Uh, D. Guedes, cracking crypto is the whale splashing the market. <laughs> Robert says, please make uh, your next premium webinar on hedging. You know, I really would like to. Um, however, I really want to focus on getting the rest of the modules out for Pathways to Profit. I think that's going to be the best thing that I can do with my time right now. Uh, as I said, I am uh, I'm 98% done with Minx. Uh, I'm going to probably open it up for the next two or three days for a few beta testers in the premium group. Uh, just see if there's any bugs. I was up till like two o'clock in the morning last night, just polishing everything because I hadn't really worked on the aesthetics. So we'll actually take a quick peek at Minx here in just a minute. But, um, so, okay, cool. I wanted to cover that. Right. So no manipulation necessarily doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to you as a trader. Doesn't matter to you for your capital. So throw that stuff out the window. Bitfinex and Tether move for case dismissal over lack of jurisdiction. I feel like I've been talking about this for like 30 minutes and we haven't gotten into the chart. So thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Bitfinex and Tether move for case dismissal over lack of jurisdiction. There's really, this isn't really an interesting article. I'm just trying to stay up to date and keep you guys up to date on the evolving situation with Bitfinex and the New York Attorney General's office. Uh, so Bitfinex and Tether lawyers are moving to dismiss their ongoing case versus the New York AG, according to court filings on May 21st. Uh, their representatives basically say that the that New York Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction over the alleged misconduct being considered. They argue that neither uh, they argue, excuse me, that the Supreme Court in New York has neither personal nor subject matter jurisdiction and that the New York Supreme Court cannot be appealed to because Bitfinex and Tether are neither operated out of New York nor harmed investors in that state. According to them. The Office of Attorney General chose to target two virtual currency businesses that have nothing to do with New York investors. The businesses do not allow New Yorkers on their platforms and do not advertise or otherwise do business here. The council further argues that the Martin Act, which is a law governing securities and commodities, does not apply to Tether's stablecoin. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip the rest of this and just touch on that briefly. This is a duh, no brainer. Of course, they were going to utilize this argument. And this is something that we've been talking about, uh, at least in the premium for a while, um, kind of developing the situation as it goes forward is that, well, you know, can, can the New York Attorney General's office even subpoena them? Do they even have standing? Do they even have legality? The United States government is going to be able to come after whoever the heck they want. And I mean, who is going to overrule them? Who's going to overrule them? Are you going to have to have another government uh, step in and overrule them or protect them? So uh, obviously we have, we have, um, I, I don't see, I, I don't necessarily see, here's, here's the point. I don't necessarily see um, Bitfinex and Tether being able to be very successful with this particular motion. Um, 
because according to the New York Attorney General's filings, they have uh, proof. And again, we know this, right? So again, for those of us trading on leveraged exchanges that do not allow United States citizens, but are trading on them anyways, who are United States citizens, we know this. If um, And this is why this, I mean, just think about this logically. This is why every ICO, this is why every leveraged exchange will not allow American customers, will not um, allow American investors, because they know damn well if America wants to go get them, they're going to go get them. Right, you guys sold to American investors. Doesn't matter if you said you weren't, you did, you didn't have good enough security audits, you didn't protect yourself well enough. Somebody can just boot up a VPN and buy your ICO. Come on, man. Somebody could just use the fake passport and get your and, and buy your initial coin offering. You're going to jail. We're going to well, maybe not going to jail, but we're going to we're going to go after you legally. Um, so again, you know, as an anti-statist, this is the truth. The government's gonna do whatever they want because they have a monopoly on the use of force. So they're gonna do whatever the fuck they want. Um you know, people who try to make legal arguments against, uh, generally in this situation, I mean, generally, you're always going to have your individuals, those passionate moments, the people winning against the, the people winning against the power. And there are honest and, uh, there are honest people out there. But again, this is not really one of those situations where I feel terrible for Bitfinex, like, oh, and yes, are they going to get hemmed up on something that they probably have little control over? No, because again, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to verify somebody's, uh, location without requiring KYC. So it is what it is. But uh, the as far as the evidence that I was referring to, from what I understand and, and what I read as I, as I went over in my video, uh, the truth about Bitfinex Tether FUD, uh, the New York Attorney General's office is claiming that they have proof that at least just $2 million that was lost or funds were seized or lost or whatever by Crypto Capital Corporation, at least $2 million of that was directly from just one New York investor himself. Uh, a doll, hello. Thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube. Now, what is super amusing about this article is this part right here, where uh, this is a direct quote from the New York Supreme Court Judge Joel Cohen, okay? And he says, and this is funny, Tether sounded to me like sort of the calm in the storm of cryptocurrency trading. Pay attention to this next part. And so if Tether is backed by Bitcoin, how is that consistent? If some of your assets are in a volatile currency that Tether is supposed to somehow modulate, that seems like it's playing into what they are saying. So we still have a long way to go for New York Supreme Court judges to understand what the fuck they're talking about. Anyways, digressing from this news as well, last thing we'll cover and then we'll get into the charts. Fellow Binanceians, Binance would like to confirm support for the upcoming Red Pulse Phoenix token migration of the NEP5 PHX tokens to BEP2 PHB tokens on Binance chain. What does that mean? Oh, check it out. So, Red Pulse Phoenix is a token on the NEO blockchain. They are moving from the NEO blockchain to the Binance bucks, as I call it, the BNB blockchain. So they are going to be doing a trade. So if you hold PHX, your PHX is now a dead chain. It is an orphan chain. You are going to be able to swap your PHX one for one for PHB. Again, maybe you can find some shady websites. They're going to promise you two for one. It's going to be like BitConnect at the top. Don't do those. Just do the, just do the legitimate factor. Just do the legitimate avenues. Now, Binance is going to do this automatically for you. So if you were holding PHX, uh, you're stuck with it for until the 24th because they have suspended trading on PHX and they are going to enable trading for the new PHB on May 24th at 0400 UTC. That is when the PHB markets will open. That is when trading will open. And at that point in time, the PVS PHX uh, pairs to BNB, Bitcoin and F will be delisted and removed. So no need to panic. Again, we don't know what's going to happen necessarily for our positions. And I was in a PHX trade myself. So we're going to see kind of how this plays out. So uh, PHX trading was disabled. If you try to pull up the PHX ticker, it's not there. Why? Because that ticker is dead and PHB ticker is not up quite yet, at least on TradingView. Uh, I believe we can go to, let's actually go check this out. I want to see if we can actually, uh, I want to see if the BTC pair is up. Uh, no, the PHP pair is not up yet, at least for the BTC. So this will probably, it's the 22nd, so it'll probably be listed tomorrow. Generally, they list them about, you know, 12 to 24 hours before they actually go live, and then it'll just be a dead page, but at least you can click on it. Uh, that's exactly what they've done with all their IEO token listings, for example. So um, again, the trading will go live at 0400, and we'll see kind of how it works. Just make sure you guys are primed, ready to rock. Uh, because if you are holding PHX, you're immediately being popped into a volatile market right off the bat. 
All right, so. Oh, shoot. Control Shift T. There we go, baby. All right, let's get over into the markets, guys, and then we'll uh, scroll back a little bit. We'll scroll back a little bit and look at the comments as we can see. Let's look at the overall market here on the hourly chart just to get a look for what's going on with BTC in and of itself. Again, we're not going to be trading necessarily directly off of this chart or this information, but it's just helpful to see and get a good grasp of price action market structure. So what do we see with market structure on the hourly chart? We do continue to see lazy listing of BTC, which is allowing altcoins to spread their legs a little bit, right? We had a very nice expansion of low sat in particular altcoins last night. So again, making sure as I teach the guys in the mentoring program, doing the daily scan is very important. We have to be doing our daily scan uh, if we want to get good results. Now, now, um, lost my train of thought there for a second. Now, normally my daily scan for my daily trading is going to take me anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes. It took me an hour and a half to two hours last night because there were so many good positions to get into. Atori Hanzo, whishing. Thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. I would like a sword, a really sharp one, a Japanese sword. Um, so uh, there are just a lot of amazing positions to put on last night in the altcoin market. Again, we're seeing some nice expansion. Interestingly enough, pulling up the charts today, looking at coin market cap, we are having a Christmas tree day, which is actually unusual for the cryptocurrency markets. Uh, typically, at least lately, and again, this is just actually typically because I've run the statistics. Uh, typically, the entire market is going to be majority green or the entire market is going to be majority red. It's not actually the norm in cryptocurrency for us to have what is considered a normal market where some things are doing well and some things are doing poorly. Uh, but I would say that low sats is definitely where it's at uh, right now as I posted in the members lounge last night. Again, BTC pairs are bad and bad and bad and bad and bad and bad and bad until they're good and then they're good for a while. So uh, we are definitely in the they are they are on their first little teeny little leg into being good. And in fact, we've already seen some good expansion from a lot of the positions, uh, excuse me, not direct positions, but a lot of the recommendations that I made last night, especially in the members lounge, looking at the entire list and docket of coins that were tradable. I believe I made at least 25 recommendations on altcoins that were ready to rock. Um, okay, so let's go into uh, what do we see with shorts? Shorts lazily rising to the upside, longs lazily falling to the downside. Again, this would seem to there's really nothing to be said about this. If you're using, if again, it just depends on how you want to use this indication. Again, when you uh, traditionally you would you would look at this as a bearish sentiment because again, and, and overall that's how I interpret it as well. Because listen, uh, we have come back up to resistance. We've formed a lower high. We are continuing to form lower highs, and we are drifting lazily down to the downside. We have not taken out our key swing low support, as we can see right here. This swing low right here that we've generated generally, you want to at least see a swing failure pattern. As you can see, lower or excuse me, a swing high formed, lower. Uh, low, a swing low formed off of that low, a higher low, and we have not taken out that low. Once we take out that low, that would be a swing failure pattern on the hourly time frame. Again, haven't seen that validated. Neither have we taken out a significant level of resistance. So Bitcoin really needs to show some bullish activity, but there's no trade to take. Again, one beautiful thing about our system is that our system is designed to keep us out of this nonsense when price is up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Now, there's a lot of volatility for those of you who want to do your intraday time for uh, do your intraday trading. We don't focus on that in this channel. We focus on a, um, a more patient, methodical, positional swing directional trading that allows us to stay out of the markets when the markets is in chop like this and capture the majority of an entire trending movement. All right. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much, uh, Fu, Fulyros Esports. Thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. Good to meet you. Okay. Uh, and pretty much again, everything in lock sync, uh, 7903 on Bitfinex, 7902 on Coinbase, 7904 on BitMEX. So good market stability and elasticity right now. There is no major divergence in price. Let's get over into the charts and look at this now. Behold, I've gotten requests about a new template. So what do you guys think about this? Let me know if you guys like it. Hopefully it's a little bit easier on the eyes. I know a lot of people said, ah, oh, that bright blue is just killing me. And that's okay. I like it. It makes me calm. But, you know, I've settled on this and I think that I can be happy with this, I suppose. If it makes you guys happy. Okay, let's move on. All right, looking at BTC USD on Bitstamp. Again, nothing to do here. Let's look at time transformation. What is time transformation doing? Time transformation actually, let's uh, let's let's pop this up a little bit. Time transformation actually is potentially closing below to the downside, invalidating any long signal at this point in time. 
Now, I want to compare that with actually what's going on, put that log on. I want to compare this actually with what is going on on BitMEX because interestingly enough, interestingly enough, we had, <clears throat> interestingly enough, we had this crossing to the upside right here on this candle. So on this candle close, uh, yesterday's candle close, we had actually closed as a cross up to the upside, generally a continuation long. So that's a position that we took as a positional trade. Now, uh, and let's look at the other factors to support that. Price is above the daily baseline, bullish. We've had a good pullback to the daily baseline. We have formed a lower high again on the daily. So I do wanna point that out in our drifting lazily down, but again, low momentum to the downside generally occurs on pullbacks. Again, none of that matters because our system simply tells us when to go long or when to go short. And over time, it doesn't matter even if we take a losing position because our system allows us to hedge our risk and have multiple opportunities to get out of minimal loss. And it over time generates fantastic signals. Now, volume is quite low and waiting to the downside. Again, multiple ways to interpret this. The classic way that I like to interpret this is falling volume on a retracement is typically bullish because that shows that there's less interested sellers and buyers are able to push price to the upside. Uh, Jovan Costa, thank you so much for joining us this evening, man. I like the blue. Are you just coordinating it with the gray shirt? Uh, actually, that does look pretty good. Maybe I can, now I can master the art of being invisible. If I just, like you can't even see me, just blend in like a chameleon. Uh, so anyways, uh, we'll see how the daily candle closes today. Should the daily candle close, uh, I'll be exiting my long position if the daily candle closes with a cross under like this. Minimal loss. So, uh, you know, as I've said for the last like three days, this is the third day where I've said, hey guys, there's really nothing to do. Uh, obviously eager and looking for any continuation signal. We got that last night, but again, it can just as easily invalidate on this current signal and we just wait for the next one. So that's about all we got for Bitcoin right now, guys. Let's go to Ethereum on the daily. Ethereum on the daily, not <clears throat> showing any strong signal yet whatsoever. We are still drifting down past the overbought level, closer and closer and closer to the zero line, which is actually exciting for me. The closer we get to the zero line, as long as we stay above the ba daily baseline, it would concur, or excuse me, it would signal to me that we are most likely going to get a continuation cross. Again, the other positive thing, similar on Bitcoin as well, is that consolidation is that consolidation near resistance, all right? So consolidating near resistance is generally always a bullish signal to me because it shows that price is not being rejected very strongly from resistance. Again, look at how quickly price bounced back. Again, this was all bots for the most part. This was genuine buying, right? This was genuine retail buying. This is excitement, right? I mean, the markets are strong right now. The markets are amazingly strong right now. There is no reason to be bearish. Now, does that mean we can wake up tomorrow and not see a $1,000 dump candle? Of course, we could absolutely see that. And guess what happens? Then the market is bearish and we look to take shorts. So Ethereum, again, holding up much stronger and, uh, can, excuse me, consolidating above not only the bearish breaker, which is now a bullish breaker, as all dips into this box should be bought because we have closed above the breaker as has, has served you well here, 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 here. Uh, that one didn't necessarily hit it. But again, uh, by utilizing the only reversal strategy that we really use at CC, which is utilizing breakers or reversals within the trend on lower time frames when we have two of three on higher time frames and we've already gotten a primary signal, uh, has done quite well for you so far. So Ethereum not generating any strong signal either to the upside or to the downside. These, uh, even though they are the big daddies of trading, there's just really not a whole lot to do with them right now. And that's okay. There's not always a good position to be taken. Now, of course, because we are on the daily, we can go down to LTFs and look for three of three. So let's start off with the 12, nothing. Let's go to the eight, nothing. Let's go to the six, nothing. Let's go to the four, nothing. Let's go to the three, nope, one, nope. 30 minute chart. Can we get a day trade? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now on the 30, we would have gotten some good signals, would have been going long, let's see here, would have been going long throughout this area right here and taking profit on this candle right there. And that's about the only good, good signal that I necessarily see at this point in time. Yeah, that's really all I see right now. So pretty good trade there on the 30 minute chart to keep us a little bit busy after that recovery. So getting long right around this period and taking profits here, that's about it. Looking at the BitMEX chart as well. Man, I'm really hungry this morning for some reason. 
Uh, looking at the BitMEX chart this morning, again, nothing, nothing, nothing to do. Uh, identical. Above the daily baseline, price is bullish, falling volume, no trade confirmed, and no continuation. So nothing to do. Going down to LTF, see if we can find anything. No, 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 and no. Similar, Ethereum would have given you a good setup on the 30-minute chart right at the end of this period. This would have had you buying right at this point in time and taking profit right here. So that was a good signal generated on the 30. Other than that, there's just been nothing to do for the last three days now almost for Ethereum and XBT. Shout out to you guys who were able to take advantage of this low volatility, uh, relative, relatively low volatility as we've seen. Uh, but for a trending factor, there's really nothing to re-enter on. Again, I, I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, uh, Ethereum is consolidating above a resistance as pull back into the uh, bearish breaker, which is now a bullish breaker. And I would not be surprised. Again, my money is going to be on this kicking to the upside. But again, not in a position until it confirms that movement either. Did take a long position on Bitcoin last night, and we'll see how the daily candle closes today. All right, getting over into our long terms. Let's take a look at, so, sorry, let's go to templates and load up this. Uh, that's weird. Okay, cool. Took a little while to load. Uh, so here we are on the daily looking at the total crypto market cap. So what is our total outlook overall on capitalization? Again, where are we at? We are consolidating in the vicinity of our last bearish order block. Bearish breaker turned bullish breaker now because we have closed above it very strongly. So all dips back into this area would be bought. Again, this is not a mark. This is not a chart for trading. This is a chart for overall sentiment, waning volume in the total market capitalization. And if we look holding up very strongly, why is this holding up much stronger than the price of Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is listing lazily down while all coins are moving up. So that's stabilizing the entire effect. And directly what we're seeing is money coming out of Bitcoin, small amount of capital coming out of Bitcoin and flowing into the low sack coins. That's exactly what we're seeing. So Bitcoin's been sideways for about two days now, and we're now seeing the low sack coins begin to pump. We'll see how long and sustained of a movement that is. Generally, it lasts for about five to seven days, sometimes seven to 10 days. We will see. All right. So on the daily time frame. Uh, do we have a strong signal to the upside to really give us confidence that the crypto market cap is going to take another leg up? No, we do not. Not at this point in time. Falling volume, sideways consolidation. Let's go take a look at the altcoin market cap, which might be a little bit more interesting. Uh, it looks quite similar, honestly. It uh, looks quite similar. So it seems like equal, at least today. Yesterday was a good day. Yesterday was a good day for the altcoin market cap. A nice 1.86 movement to the upside. And not giving it all quite back today. But I'd say that uh, I would say that the market is definitely tentative right now. So we had money flow out of Bitcoin into altcoins and profit get taken quite quickly. So uh, we need a little bit more. We need a little bit more volume. We need a little bit more chutzpah, you know what I mean, um, to generate that five to seven, seven to 10. So we'll see again. Still pretty excited about uh, altcoins at this point in time, at least the low sets, at least for the next three to five days. So we'll see. Uh, longs. Long still quite high, long still quite bullish, obviously having a pullback at this point in time. Uh, having gotten the crossover, I would expect to get the crossover on the daily, telling you to be, again, you can use this as a leading indicator, telling you to be out of a long position on Bitcoin at this point in time. Again, this crossover will also reference with the actual chart, so you can utilize both of these as leading indicators using our system, when to be in and when to be out. Let's look at... Let's look at shorts. No, nope, absolutely no reason to be in a short position at this point in time. We are still below the daily baseline on shorts. And even though price is rising up, we are still well below trend. And the odds of this reversing is more likely based on statistical analysis. Uh, let's look at CME futures. How are they responding to this? Absolutely sideways. Nothing to do here as well. CME futures, again, going to give us a cross down on the daily. Did not even give us a nice continuation cross, actually. Didn't give us a continuation cross. Uh, as the other uh, as the other charts dip, waning volume on the pullback and actually CME futures holding resistance uh, more strongly than spot exchanges. So that's good to see. Uh, GBDC as well, holding up to resistance quite nicely, uh, did not give us the crossover as well. So just continuing to list lazily down. But again, I think it looks quite good. Pulled pull back directly to the daily baseline and now just chilling at resistance. Good sign to see. Bitcoin dominance, looking at Bitcoin dominance, continues its drop, all right? Continues its drop. We had a nice drop off. Pull back to the daily baseline. Fake out. Close below. Let's see if we do get rejected. We are printing bearish momentum. And we have a potential, even though we're curling up, we are still below the zero line now on this. So this overall does not look healthy. No, uh, we're not allowed to take utilize this as a bullish sentiment. The sentiment on that is bearish. Let's go look at traditional markets. We will look at our long-term chart. 
sorry. Uh, we'll start with the S&P as we always do. S&P, again, as I said yesterday, rejected from the daily baseline, closing higher, excuse me, opening a little bit higher and rejecting from the daily baseline again. So opened up just a tad bit higher, wicked up to the daily baseline and rejected to the secondary baseline, currently consolidating in between those two levels. We did get a crossover on our primary, con uh, our primary indicator. However, we are below the daily baseline and printing bearish divergence. So although we are out of confirmation for a short, we did not get that continuation cross to take another short to the downside. As we got our primary short signal on the S&P right here, there's no reason to be, uh, we don't have validation to take another signal down. Now, if this does cross down, uh, then we then we have all we have all systems go because we are printing good bullish bearish momentum, good bearish volume, and we are below the daily baseline. All is well for a short. Uh, NQ looks actually, um, much more unhealthy. The NQ is actually gearing up, yes, perfectly for another short today. Uh, if the daily closes like this, so around six to seven, we can look at taking another NQ short if we want. This looks quite healthy. And the Dow, uh, Dow invalidating short orders, but also unable to take along of this as well. So overall, I'd say traditional markets do not look good. You are seeing the headlines in the news this morning that says cryptocurrency pulls back a little bit as stocks surge. Bullshit, motherfucker. They are bearish as hell, dude. You do not call a correction to test resistance. <laughs> uh, a surge, man. That's a that's a, that's 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 profit taking on shorts, and that's people buying the bottom. That's people buying the bottom, expecting a trend reversal. And again, for individuals like that, most people don't understand that the trade is from here to here, not here to here. Most people think I'm going to buy the bottom, and we're going to get into a strong trend. No, dude. You buy here when the trend is confirmed. Right there on this candle on the 4th of January 2019 is our long signal on the Dow. And that's when we have gone long. That's when we have gone long. We would have taken profits here. We would have taken profits at 1.7%. We would have taken profits here at 3.71. We would have taken profits at 6.26. We would have taken profits at 9. We would have taken profits on 10. We would have 10% Dow trade, okay? 10% Dow trade, not trying to buy the goddamn bottom and getting wrecked. Because look, when price is trending, it's going to bottom many times. And just about everybody that buys that bottom thinks that price is going to do this. But price does not do this. Price does this, and often they get stopped out, right? Do not catch raw reversals against the trend. It is unprofitable. When you, I mean, just seriously, dude, look at this. Trending. Get in, get out. Follow the trend, 60% up. Come on, guys. All right, anyways, getting back over to the markets. Let's answer some of your questions. It's actually 12.58, guys, so I'm gonna take a quick two to three minute break. I'm gonna refresh my water cup uh, and uh, I'll be right back. We're gonna go through the chat. We're gonna look at your requests. If you guys have some requests, uh, whether they be Forex, traditional markets, or cryptocurrency, again, Title of the show is Cracking Cryptocurrency, but we allow we are allowed to trade anything. We do what we want around here. So big shout out to all you guys watching us live on YouTube, Twitch, DLive, and Facebook Live. Again, if you have any questions, make sure to throw them in the chat. And we will be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere.
All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging in there. Let's get back into this, guys. We're going to turn the audio down just a little bit on this, and we're going to get back into the music. All right, Fibby222, thank you so much for the follow on Twitch, my good friend. All right, now there is a lot of chat in here, guys. I want to thank the over 1,000 people joining us live across just Facebook Live, Twitch, DLive, YouTube. Did I say Twitch? We're live on Twitch. We are there. All right, so much to get through, guys. Uh, I'm just going to kind of randomly scroll here. I'm sorry. Uh, Hillary Clinton is a reptilian. Lols. Trading allows you to be able to scale much easier. Most business scaling is incredibly difficult, says Moonshine Fuel. Shout out to you, my good friend. Caribbean Crypto Show. Good to see you. Write a book, Justin, says it's hard. Uh, Florgon333 says, makes me want to do calisthenics. Midwest Attempts got me about this close to giving you money to join VIP lulls. Uh, good to see you, brother. Uh, let's see here. I'm not a financial advisor nor a pot advisor, says Scott. Oh, man. I do realize, uh, this is a question. Matt A says, you do realize Tether pretty much pioneered stable coins and markets can thank them for bringing most of the liquidity into a market that had massive issues to legally bring liquidity. Without Tether, Bitcoin and crypto could be much different. People owe them a lot. Sure, yeah, somebody would have done it.
All right, let's see here. Double, triple, WTF, PHB name. RPX, then PHX, then PHB. <laughs> All right. Crypto Stash says, happy to be part of the revolution. Jordan London says, what emas do I use? It depends on, it depends on really the strategy that I'm implementing. We have several proprietary strategies. The primary one that I utilize on stream that forms the backbone of my trading is PTP. Again, the EMA is not necessarily important in and of itself. However, what I do utilize personally is the 13 period exponential moving average. I find it works fantastically on all time frames as the delineator of trend. However, the true purpose is to find a baseline that works well for you. Do I prefer using USD? on crypto for trading generally yes justin could you please check mfi weekly chart for btc and give us your thought well i do not utilize mfi so i could not give you a strong opinion i'm very familiar with how mfi works but i would be glad to 20939 says hey justin can you look at chain link again it's broken it's all-time high against btc let's take a peek let's go to our schedule we'll add chain link on there so this is the time guys if you got requests please throw them in the chat uh, BTC MFI weekly. I hear Asian markets play a lot of sympathy plays where they run with same sector trades following the heavy pump of one coin in particular. The low sat run was dominated by Binance IEO's thoughts, asks Andrew. So I guess the conspiracy out there is that the huge IEO pump is in some way engineered by Binance to try to recover the funds that were lost from their hack. I don't know. That sounds like wishes and fishes. Seems quite similar to me. Again, obviously somewhat of an unprecedented run on IEOs. Again, our system got us into those trades at the exact right time, right before the run up. So I don't really know, man. I don't really know. Uh, that sounds like a likely idea. Again, we try to stay far away from anything that delves into the realm of speculation. Gary Morgan, good to see you here as well. Do I only trade markets or also individual shares? I don't trade traditional equity right now. However, were I to, I would trade anything and everything that was viable. Adam Bro, Adam Borokowski asks, Ziliqua, please, looking bullish. Uh, make sure to specify when you're making a request, what quote pair I'm assuming Bitcoin, but I do prefer to default to USDT unless otherwise specified inverse head and shoulder on BNB Ethereum four hour chart could break out from current level says anomaly 123 second that Adam Matic and or other IEOs going to be parabolic again. I don't know. I do know that we're not getting signals on them to go right now. What are my thoughts on Ethereum short term, long term? I went over that right at the beginning of the show, not at the beginning of the show, but about the midpoint of the show when I did Bitcoin and Ethereum. No trade to go on right now. Of course, the charts are bullish, so I'm looking for a movement to the upside on them. Yes. But Tam in Pandero Vero says, doesn't matter who or what made price go up or down. Whales or not, it's all relative. That's all noise. You got that right, brother. How do you determine when you want to follow a system? When do you enter starting from scratch? Do you wait for an uptrend to, or go with an uptrend first or just take the signal and monitor closely? So that's, there's a, that's a simple answer. Uh, there, I'll give you the long answer, short answer. Short answer, uh, short answer. We, we go over all that in Pathways to Profit. Long answer. What you need to determine is a rules-based system. So that's what we do in PTP. We do hand people a system that works out of the box. In fact, we we have one primary system right now. I have four others that I'm gonna be rolling out uh, and making sure that they're user-friendly because there's nuances and discretionary rules-based trading systems that I utilize with those. So I'm gonna make them mechanical, which they are, but Minx is gonna be part of that. So I'm pairing Minx with the rest of the system. Minx out of the box pretty much is everything that is PTP. Uh, it is one of those few indicators that you could just use in and of itself. Again, just utilizing Minx and actually stripping away some of the other qualifiers that we have in our uh, in our PTP system, which again, uh, I want I, I would prefer to call it the TT system because it utilizes heavily time transformation with Wadatar Explosion, uh, as well as our base 
baseline. Again, baseline always being an important element, but I've coded the baseline into Minx hard coded so that it already understands exactly when to go. Now I tested using Watatar confirmation for Minx and found that actually historically it actually reduced my results. So I was only able to outperform the market by a factor of three. Uh, this is in Pine. And I was able to outperform the market by a factor of four when I actually took that qualifier away. That's how good Minx is out of the box. But again, it's not just the indicator, it's the way that you use it. It's the discipline. Uh, what about Ethereum Euro on Kraken? A massive market buy, but hardly any market movement. Bearish signal. Typically that would be a, um, so it depends on how you want to interpret that. And that's why we don't we don't really look at stuff like that uh, because it could mean anything, right? A massive market buy is often a sign of accumulation or that price is being suppressed. So you're having large sell walls put up while people, while individuals are accumulating coins and continuing to move their sell walls up. Uh, however, at the same time, a massive market buy with no market movement could also be a bearish signal because that could signify that the sell walls are so large uh, that that market chew order that that market order just got chewed up without able to, without being able to push the price up. However, again, the other tertiary of that is that that market buy order was a sign that that sell wall is going to get in, eaten into. That could lead to more bullish activity, more individuals trying to chew that market order away. It, that stuff. I mean, I know I understand that people utilize information like that as a core fundamental part of their strategy but it doesn't work most of the time because it's so speculative. How can you design a rule around that, right? If the market buy, if the sell wall is this many Bitcoins based on relative volatility and the buy is this many coins based on this relative volatility or liquidity or market capitalization, it's, it's unhelpful for the most part, in my personal opinion. But I will take a look at Ethereum Euro. Again, I'm bullish on the, the again, the charts are bullish. Ethereum and Bitcoin are in a bullish posture. Doesn't mean there's a trade to be taken. And again, the market could move. We could trend to the downside and initiate a trending to trending short signal, in which case we take a short. Right now, uh, right now there's nothing to do. ETH Euro on Kraken. And somebody asked for Zill USD. What do I think about time analysis trading? Uh, in general, I'm fairly negative on it. I did integrate that as part of my Ripple BTC trade that I took, made about 30% on that trade. I talked about that trade at length on the stream. I very rarely trade raw market reversals, but I did take a trade. Of course, that wasn't just time analysis. That was also a breaker trade as well. Andrew says, I don't think it's manipulated or anything. I just don't get the low alt pumps. Things like fun and MPXX and VeChain didn't move, whereas clearly seller Matic and Fetch AI did. Right. Well, he had more buyers in those markets than buyers in the other markets. However, we did see a pretty big pump on MPXX the other day. Matic just popped. Hell yeah, it's on. Maybe. Yeah, baby. Four days straight of 14% to 19%. Red candle starting tomorrow, says Schwartz88. Justin, could I look at engine BTC, please? All right. Okay, we've got some requests. I think we're ready to start rocking and rolling. Let's start with Link. Uh, QLC was a very good one that came up in the daily scan uh, the other day. Right here is the initiation signal right here where we're allowed to go long. And boom, that's a good one. That one came up in the daily scan. Sir Newton, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Link BTC. Uh, Link BTC is a very good coin. Let's take a look here. Right here on this candle was the initiation signal from our strategy would have captured all of this. Of course, this was a period where I was returning my father from the hospital. So again, these trades are not ones that I was able to put on myself. But again, the tools and rules that we provided to all the members, if they're doing their daily scan properly and following the system are capturing every single movement like this, every single strong trend. Can we enter into Link right now? No, we can't. Unfortunately, no, we can't. Now it is bullish. We do have three of three on the daily, so we can go down to lower time frame and look for a signal to go in. Let's see where we, we would have been able to get in here on the eight hour. Let's go down to the six hour. Uh, we would have been able to get into link here on the six hour right here. Been able to capture all of that. Go down to the four hour. All right, here's a sell signal. Now on the four hour, you do have a four hour chart. You do have a four hour trade on the close of this four hour candle. Uh, this candle is gonna be closing in an hour and 43 minutes. So I typically wait until about 20 minutes for the four hour candle to close. So here in about an hour and 20 minutes, you could put on, put on a position for link on the four hour chart. Remember that's going to be a 16 hour trade, time frame times four. 
Uh, three hour chart, you could have gotten into a long on this candle right here, not able to do anything now. Hourly chart, you could have taken a long on the close of the last hourly candle. So I'd say you're still, you're, you're out of that window when, an, when it's an hourly candle, I only like five to 10 minutes, you're beyond 20 or about beyond 20. Uh, 30 minute chart, you could have taken a re long on this candle right here. So you can go down to the 30 minute chart and look for trades to the upside on link. The one discretionary factor is the unnatural volume right here. I like to see candles close with unnatural volume as you can see the yellow diamond that is printed in time transformation. When we do get a yellow diamond, that is a warning signal that we are that we are generally gonna get. So this is what the yellow diamond indicates and those of you who are utilizing time transformation know this very well for those of you who are subscribers. But when you are consolidating and you get a nice candle breaking resistance on a natural volume, that is a very healthy sign. That is further confirmation of a breakout. Typically when you get a yellow diamond uh, in a late sta in the late stage of an uptrend, when so you get something that looks like this, this typically is a sign of late stage buying and often a reversal. So uh, me personally, at my discretion, I would definitely not wanna be entering into a position. Again, it is valid to go down to the lower time frames and look for the trade because price is bullish enough that on average price is more likely to go up than go down. But looking at this yellow diamond, I would really like to see the daily candle close and see what the direction is going to be. Took 37% on link and sold at $1.37. Did I pull too early? Nope, you took good profit. What percent do you give an upswing as we keep consolidating versus a downswing for link or Bitcoin? And keep in mind that regardless of what answer you give me, any answer that I give you is just going to be noise out of my mouth. Whether I say 60 or 70 or 80% doesn't really matter. The market's going to do what it's going to do. That's why we have a system that tells us exactly what to do when. So overall, uh, discretionary, I believe that the market is more likely to move up than down at the current moment in time. I think that Bitcoin and Ethereum look quite healthy in constructive charts. I like the consolidation at resistance. I like the strong closes above the, the, the order blocks of resistance. But me giving some arbitrary number as to my percentages is going to be uh, not helpful for you at all and slightly misleading, extremely misleading. Uh, BTC, okay, so let's look at BTC USD. You said you would like to look at the MFI on the weekly. Let's just uh, look at the Bitfinex chart, for example, and we will throw on the MFI indicator. Uh, money flow, I believe it's, no. All right, let's look at the money flow indicator. So let me tell you guys how I like to use the money flow indicator and most indicators of this nature. This is a zero to 100 scale. Actually, I don't think there's actually an upswing of how high this can go. Yeah, typically this oscillates from zero to 100. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a line at zero, or excuse me, at 50, because this is not a centered oscillator. Now, what are the best signals that this is going to generate? Short, when the MFI crosses below 50, when it crosses below the zero line. So this would have told you to go short right here. And to go long when it crosses the zero line, it would have told you to go long right here. You'd be up 100% had you listened to it. Uh, this is not to be utilized as a reversal indicator. Why? Because reversal indicators suck. They try to predict price. When you use it as a trending confirmation indicator, it tells you it confirms what price is already doing. So insofar as the MFI, I assume we're talking about it being overbought. Every indicator is overbought. Even time transformation has been overbought since uh, March on the weekly time frame. Now, interestingly enough, let's see how the weekly let's see how the weekly candle closes. We are getting a our first weekly sell signal from time transformation. We got our first weekly buy signal right here down at the bottom of the structure and our first weekly sell signal at the top. But the daily baseline is going to tell us when to actually be in a short position. So as soon as the daily baseline closes below the EMA, I would assume that we're going to be getting signals to be going short as well. So, yes, higher time frame, a little bit of discretion here. Be on your guard. But overall, there's nothing to do right now. There's no trade to the downside to be taken. And you look at the daily as your generator and look for that in that shorter term trade, one to four days of upside. We got time, but no money. But there ain't nobody stopping us. We got
HST decision token. Don't know anything about it. All right. Uh, Zill BTC. Let's look at Zilliqua. Zilliqua was something that came up on the daily scan. But no signal. Unable to take Zilliqua. Unable to take Zilliqua because of the way our situation was positioned. Now, discretionary rules based. What do we got right here? We've got consolidation and resistance. Yellow, yellow diamond on this candle, yellow diamond on this candle. This might generate a signal to the upside. Uh, I don't really like the way, again, I like this chart, but as far as taking a trade per our strategy, uh, we've already gone far beyond the baseline. We've already gone 20% far beyond the baseline. And more important than that, what's really important is ATR. So ATR on this candle was 28 sats. And we've already gone beyond uh, one ATR from the baseline. So it's just too risky, man. It's just too risky of a trade to take. Coming up upon resistance of our 55 exponential moving average as well, which is still curling to the downside. So yeah, nothing to do, nothing to do here with, um, nothing to do here with uh, Mr. Uh, with Mr. Zilliqua, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Utilizing that same MFI, you would have been able to take a long right here with the MFI crossing 50 right here. You would have been able to get in right here. Time transformation kept you out. Time transformation is good at keeping you out of losers. All right, uh, let's see here. What else can we do? We can go down to the lower time frames and look for a trade. Uh, we could have taken a trade uh, on the close of the last 12-hour candle here for Zilliqua. would have entered right here. And again, this is why looking at things like reversals and market structure are just so inefficient. Most people would look at this right here and with no other knowledge say, man, that looks really oversold. Look at that candle. I'm going to take a short. Now, you'd have been fucking wrong and you'd have missed out on 13% profit. Let the trend confirm itself, which is exactly what our system is doing right here, and take the trade in the right direction. All right, 8-hour you could have taken right here. Six hour you could have taken right here. Four hours actually giving you a fresh signal on the close of this candle. So you got about an hour and 15 minutes for you can take the trade. Three hour as well is going to give a signal at the close of the three hour candle. Hourly gave you a signal a couple hours ago. 30 minute got you in back here on this candle right here. And intraday traders. Got you in here. And still in the trade. So pay attention to those three and four hour. Uh, pay attention to those three and four hour time frames on Zilliqua BTC. Uh, Joe Van Costa, thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. ATR is the average true range. TRX USDT. Add it to the list. ETH Euro on Kraken. So we'll go ahead and continue to use MFI as a confirmation indicator just to show you guys how effective it is when you use it the way it's, in my opinion, supposed to be used and not the way that most people want to use it as a reversal indicator. It can be really good as a reversal indicator to exit your position. You should not be entering into positions on it. Average true range is an indicator that measures volatility. It forms the basis of Quadrigo ATR, which is our stop and target system. It is the measurement of the average distance from the high to the low over a series of candles. And we utilize it to determine stop loss and take profit. So we use actual market volatility to tell us how far price is likely to go. It's the only valid method, in my opinion, of actually predicting price movement. Jonathan Falcher, thank you so much for the question. Again, as always, Google is your friend, brother. All right, let's see here. So uh, let's look at Ethereum Euro. 
And again, just want to denote to you guys where we would have been able to take a position on Ethereum Euro. Right here, excuse me, right here on the close of this candle is time when time transformation would have got us in. One day early, right here, we would have been into Ethereum Euro right here. And MFI would have gotten you in right on the next candle. So MFI doing good. We just showed a couple of examples where MFI got you in on the first, uh, got you in a little bit earlier. Here's a good example where time transformation actually got you in earlier and kind of kept you out of this noise, as did MFI. Adam Borokowski says, thanks, Justin, for the Zillico analysis. Knurling a lot. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, brother. All right. Uh, Ethereum Euro, you said big market buy. Let's go down and look at little candles. And let's look at volume. So you said there was a big market buy. Oh, the order book's only going to go back a little bit. I don't know where to look at the historical order book for uh, for Kraken, to be quite honest with you. I don't think BC Depth's going to show it. But honestly, man, I really don't think it means anything. <laughs> Jonathan Falter says, I prefer your dulcet tones. Thank you. Zen BDC, Zen has been counter trending the dips in alt markets. When would the system have triggered a, a sell and buyback? Let's take a look, bro. Uh, Midwest Attempt says, sorry, but can you explain why it would be the white candle second over to the green on your entry instead of the green candle on this chart? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go to uh, the daily is where your question was generated. Let's go to the daily. And OK, the uh, the reason why is because here, let me t time to our uh, water. Atar is coloring bars. So let's just turn the bar coloring off. Uh, so let's talk about the system. Uh, let's talk about the system. So on. Let's take a look at where MFI would have gotten us in on this candle. So you can see. MFI on this candle is crossing the 50 line, crossing the median line. And you have Wada Atar. I guess Wada Atar really isn't confirming, but just using MFI as an indicator for an entry signal. This is when uh, MFI would have gotten you in. Maybe you can pair it with a more sensitive volume oscillator that is going to get you, or volume indicator that can get you in on this candle. On this candle. Actually, you know what? Let me correct. Let me, let me correct myself. It's this candle. This candle, actually, time transformation can get you in. Now, you could discretionarily enter on uh, any of these candles. This is when time transformation first tells you to start looking for a long right here. You're in, you're in, you're in, you're in, you're in, but you don't have volume confirmation throughout any of this period in time. So it keeps you out of this chop. And then when price gets really bullish, time transformation gives you the go-ahead. MFI would have gotten you in a little bit early, but again, no volume confirmation here on ETH Euro. And the reason why is because we're looking for time transformation to do the exact similar thing and cross to the upside. And when it recrosses, we can get a continuation signal as it does on the 7th of May, right? As it does right here, we actually get that confirmed signal on the, sorry, 7th of May right here. Volume doesn't confirm. Confirms on the 8th. So discretionarily, secondary uh, system of PTP, you can take that trade. 
Adam Borokowski says, is reading time transformation signals easy to learn and hard to master or easy to learn and easy to master with secondary confirmation signals, of course? I mean, this is going to sound this is going to sound silly, but it's really not. The way that I lay things out in PTP, I think, is very easy to understand. Again, I showed most of the guys. We, ha we don't have all the modules for PTP out. Uh, so the modules that we do not have out yet, so some of the elements that are lacking in PTP that are going to be coming out over the next three to six months. Uh, again, I've explained this. Uh, I, I explained how to utilize this particular implementation of PTP uh, in the voice chat for the members lounge. So it's something that takes a while to master. I would say that again, that's why the course generally takes people three to six months for about an hour a day, two hours a day. Uh, and then the system is designed to teach you how to trade utilizing 30 minutes to an hour of your day of your time a day. That's where I do most of my active trading 30 minutes to an hour a day. So I'd say they're easy to learn and easy to be profitable with. There's lots of nuance, as with anything, that you're going to develop over time. Robert Kirk, good to see you, bro. Uh, Crypto, Kiss, uh, Crypto Chris says, oh, I guess all you care. Cup and handle pattern on the HSD decision token, six month chart, bullish pattern. Whatever, man. Sorry, you're silly. MFI stands for Money Flow Index. Roy Coin says, a couple of weeks ago, you did a stream with Bennett. He released a volume guide and a Fibonacci guide. He is a profitable trader as far as I know. What do you think of his trading strategy? I have nothing but positive things to say about Bennett. He is an extremely bright young man, a very talented individual, uh, and he does trade for profit. What I will say is that it is my personal opinion that utilizing what he focuses on for beginners, uh, I do not think will work. I do not think will work. I, I feel very passionately about that. I think he's doing very well. And I think that there's a lot of traders that are going to gravitate toward him that do want to trade on lower time frames. And I think he is very skilled at doing that. However, it requires having the schedule of a full-time trader, i.e. trading for six to eight hours a day. So my system is designed to teach individuals who want to make profit and be a professional trader as I am who want to use a higher time frame trend following strategy because that is not what he does. He does not follow trends. He looks to trade mostly reversals. So I have nothing I have nothing negative to say about Bennett. I think he's very intelligent. Um, I consider him a, a, a friend. I talk to him on Discord. I, I think some of the stuff that he's developed is really, really neat. He has a unique way of looking at the market. Unfortunately, I think that his unique way of looking at the market for the majority of retail traders is not going to work out for them. because most retail traders are not gonna have the ability to invest the time. Most retail traders are not gonna have the money management discipline or skill that is gonna be generated from a higher time frame trend following system. Again, one of the key reasons why our system works so well, one of the key reasons that our system works so well is because of its focus on money management, psychology, and discipline, which most individuals, the reason most individuals do lose in day trading is because they don't have the required discipline, patience, or money management skills necessary. Uh, and Kit Danraj says, how I know I become pro trader, LOL, uh, when people give you money to trade for them. That is the definition of a professional trader. The true, de I mean, the basic definition of a professional trader is anybody who's trading with live money. For me, a professional trader is somebody who is or can manage other people's funds or makes more money at the end of the year than the beginning of the year. James Jeffers, good to see you, bro. Uh, this was just a request. So let's switch over to... Delacroix USD. Zilliquois USD. Zilliquois USD. I actually gave the buy signal on this candle right here. Yeah, that was a good one right there. Uh, and let's actually, sorry, let's go back in time. Actually, Zilliquois gave the buy signal on this candle right here as well. So you could, could have gotten in on the 13th of May, and I am certain that is a winner in some capacity. Get a nice 25.38% profit potential off of that. And you are allowed to re-enter on this candle right here. And you have had a 
16.74% um, profit potential on that. Uh, Coca Cola <laughs> or Coca Cola. <laughs> what is the orange line? That is the daily baseline, my good friend. Adam Borakowski says, thanks, Justin. Time to take some Zill profit and subscribe so I can master that time transformation. You'll also have the ability to use Minx as well because that will be out. Uh, I want to get it out. I want to get it out to the subscribers this weekend at the latest. So I'm going to spend the next two days uh, working with my team and a couple beta testers just to make sure all kinks have been worked out. But there's nothing that, again, I went through the, the code line by line. I was up all night, you know, doing the 19th version of the strategy tester, making sure that it works exactly how I want it to do. Phil Basno says, since I am absolutely new on this channel, what is the name of the software you're using? Uh, I'm using, the software I'm using is called Brave Browser and this website's called TradingView. So this is TradingView's website hosted trading software platform. Uh, but you can't, you, I don't trade cryptocurrency directly from here. I have my trading computer over here that I execute directly from. Let's go to... Oh, so sorry. I, I think you wanted a little bit more than, oh, we could have gotten here and we could have gotten here. Uh, going down to the lower time frames to look for entry. Uh, nothing. Everything's telling you to be pretty out of the market at this point in time. Yeah, I would definitely wait. Thank you, Crypto Sheep. Wendy says, I feel like puking this XBT trade. Never puke a trade without confirmation, my good friend. And engine BTC. Uh, let's see here. Signal the long on yesterday. Wow, that's a lot of lines. Let's get rid of those. Signal the long on yesterday's candle close, and you would have had a 13.84% profit potential so far. Jonathan Falcher, I do use three commas for Binance trading. Yes, I do. Ed McCracken, so if my parents gave me money to invest in crypto for them, does that make me a professional trader? No, because the word there was invest. You would actually need to actively trade in my in my personal opinion. Again, everybody's going to have a different opinion about what makes a pro trader. For me, it's pretty simple. You either are actively managing other people's money and are an active trader, or B, you make more money at the end of the year than you began at the beginning. You can do either of those two things. You are in the 1% of traders. Uh, engine BTC looked good. You could have entered upon last night's candle close. Going down to lower time frames for entry. 12 hour would have given you a signal 12 hours ago, of course. Let's see here. Eight hour would have gotten you in right here. Six hour would have gotten you in right here. Here, nope. Four hour would have gotten you in here. You wouldn't have been able to get in here on the four hour chart. Three hour would have gotten you in here. The hourly is about to give you a fresh. Nope, nope. Sorry, the hourly is not. Nope. There's no. There's no volume. Why is keeping you out on the hourly? Yeah, I don't see any entries for engine BTC right now, brother. And yesterday was the trade, and we missed it. That's why we got to be doing our daily scans at the correct time. The correct time we teach everybody to do it in PTP. At what point am I thinking of shorting Ethereum? Uh, when it confirms a bearish trend, crypto sheep. 
Uh, Seneki Zedjiknet. Zedjiknet. Chenek Zedjiknet. Hopefully I said that right. I probably lost all the Russian viewers or Eastern European viewers. I invested for over the years. How can you make a good game plan and when to cash out? Trend following strategy, my good friend. Uh, BNB USDT on the daily, uh, if it closes, is going to be an exit signal. Meaning if this candle closes just the way it is right now, that is a you are out of the trade, good sir. You are done. You are not allowed to take this trade any further. And of course, we would have been in on the trade on this candle right here. On the 13th, BNB USDT, all the way up. About 34.24% profit generated by the system. Mario, yes, Matic is like really, really high. We Again, uh, I'll, I'll look at Matic for you guys. Listen, this is how we trade around here. Yeah, we said yesterday to get out of Matic. This is when we. This is when you get in Matic, all right? On this candle right here is when our system generated a signal. And you would have taken some profit here. You would have re-entered on this candle right here. And you probably would have captured a good majority of this. And it's done, man. You have to wait for another signal to re-enter. Chill out, man. I realize there's like 12 other hundred coins. Look at how the look at how the daily closed yesterday. This is this is nothing that you go long on. There's no signal to go long on this candle. No signal to go long on this candle. The signal to go long on this candle right here. And that was a good trade. It's no different, Robert Kirk. Um Yo, Jay Wise says, pay him. I recall you saying you were in PHX. I was as well before they did this PHP migration. Now I'm concerned that when PHP comes into play on 524, what would be the initial price? I don't know. I have no clue. I would assume that it would be the same price that PHX was. Otherwise, there's going to be some pretty big bash backlash. I'm going to go find uh, CZ's private address. Asan Ravian, thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. No, uh, it's signaling because time transformation is giving you a sell signal. Jose says, going long on Matic with 100% of account. Short Bitcoin says crypto gum. No, that's not the right move, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, Abyss? Let's look at Abyss real quick. Uh, well, we could have bought Abyss this day right here, and we would have captured all this, which is why, guys. Yeah, it's probably going to pump if they just announce that they're trading with the that they're going to be trading with Fortnite. I just don't recommend that people buy stuff like this. I don't I don't trade in high news events cuz anything could happen. I don't buy coins based on news events. The strategy would have told you to buy a best right here and you'd be up about 30%. Mufad P, super quick example. Signals are generated to go long when time transformation crosses above the zero line. Signals are generated to go short when it crosses below the zero line. Signals that take profit are generated in part when we get divergence, which is denoted by these lines. This identifies divergence in price. Yellow diamonds represent unnatural volume, which can be part of your discretionary position sizing or discretional rules-based position sizing. When time transformation crosses above the signal line, that is an indication to take profit. When those crosses happen in certain conditions under certain market conditions, they generate powerful either reversal signals or strong take profits. 
that can be used as discretionary position sizing. You can utilize this tool many, many ways. You can trade divergence if you want to trade divergence. You can trade crosses. You can trade trends. You can trade reversals. It's designed to do just about everything that I wanted from an indicator. I have a full guide on how to utilize it, not only just TT, but also how to utilize it as part of PTP, at least as part of the, it's part, it's part of what's covered in PTP. Most of the traders should, uh, just about the great majority of all the traders who have been joining our live voice sessions are fully versed on how to utilize the system. When you're looking at lower time frames, are you mostly just matching chart chart time frames with TT time frame? Yeah. Yep. Is time transformation only included in VIP? Time transformation, Quadrigo, ATR, and Minx are both proprietary indicators that subscribers do have access to, including the Pathways to Profit course, all our premium webinars, our resource library, our educational tools, our private uh, our private community, our one on one mentoring, all our signals as well. My mic is jacked. Subscribers do have access to, including the Pathways to Profit course, all our premium webinars, our resource library, our educational tools, our private, our private community, our one-on-one -on -one mentoring, all our signals as well. Cash out. Trend following strategy. Strategy, my friend. Well, you're crazy. My mic is not jacked, sir. My mic is uh, great. Marlon Jones, the link at the top of the screen and the first link in the description will take you to our premium informational section of our website, has all the information that you would uh, that you would need on there. There's also a premium info section in our Discord, and of course you can DM me any of the admins, any of the analysts, any of the moderators, and we'd be happy to get you started, man, or, or answer any questions that you may have. Do you think that you can capture the rally before the news breaks from the charts? Yeah, I just showed you specifically an example of how you can. Right here. You take the trade because the system tells you to take the trade. What length am I using in my EMA? 13 on this particular uh, example. With BNB signaling to get out, would you then be looking for liquidity zones to place potential buys, or do you just wait till you get a signal? There is one method that we can use to trade. There's actually two methods that we can utilize to trade reversals in PTP. Uh, but in general, I'd say 80% are looking for another signal. Thanks, guys. Oh, that is a big black mic is what he meant. Your mic doesn't speak English. Thanks, guys. Oh, he meant jacked like buff, big, swole. It is, uh, it is a girthy microphone. You get what you pay for, though, you know? Uh, Sineke, I think I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. All right. Uh, HST BTC, decision token, huh? Uh, this looks like, this looks like shit, dude. <laughs> the fuck is this? All right, well, let's talk about where we would have shorted this, uh, if we could. Uh, system would have told us to enter into a short trade on this candle right here. And it has at no point in time generated a long signal. Uh, when did it generate? When when should we have gone long on HST? Uh, let's see here. On this candle right here, we would have gone long on HST. Uh, taking profit here, that's 15%. Taking profit here, that's 11. Uh, here we can take a long. Got about 12% opportunity there. Um, 
don't capture that. Uh, only, I mean, only certain select few captured that. And then basically short the whole way down, man. And now it looks like HST might be entering into accumulation, but I mean, we don't, we don't trade reversals, man. This thing will tell you when it's bullish. I mean, look where, it at is in, look where it's at in relation to the baseline. Look at what happens when price goes above the baseline. It tends to stay above the baseline. Look what happens when price goes below the baseline. It tends to go below the baseline. You don't trade this nonsense. Naruto Uzumaki says, Hi, I bought that microphone you have, but I have issues with having it sound like yours does. There's a lot of background noise. I can hear clearly and loudly mouse clicking. What should I do? So uh, getting the audio settings is very tricky. It's one of those things that nobody really wants to... Um, it's really one of those things that, that nobody wants to mess with, but is so necessary, especially if you want to have a good sounding stream. So um, I'm not exactly sure what software you're using. So there's lots of different ways to do it. I would recommend doing some extensive Googling, but I'll give you a TLDR of how I do. So I run my microphone through an equalizer. So I, I do an equalizer that I've done in my, in my room with my sound conditions. Um, I have a subtractive filter to reduce background noise. I have a noise gate to click on and click off based on decibels. So when you hear my mouse or my keyboard, you don't hear anything like that. Um, and then I also have a compressor so that, you know, when I get really close to the microphone or if I yell, it won't blow your ears out. Um, I also, so I used to do that directly in the software. And now what I actually do is I run it through uh, an audio software program that then my streaming software in, uh, pulls in as an input device. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't push my audio directly into my streaming software. What I do is I, I, um, my, a program on my computer catches the audio coming from my mic. I do all my editing in the, in there, in the software suite. And then I push that forward to my streaming software or recording software. Either is the same. So it's kind of a pain in the butt, but once you kind of get it dialed in, I mean, honestly, it's taken me about eight hours to get it dialed in, but I mean, getting it there is well worth it because once you got it, you just set it and forget it. Glue traps. Feeling like alts are starting to move. Justin, what are my thoughts on alts as a whole right now? I got really bullish on alts last night, man. Put on a bunch of positions. People tend to lean in when they talk louder, right? Like, hey, let's get loud and also get closer to the microphone at the same time. All right, so uh, decision token, um, TRX USDT. How much are they paying you, sir, to come in here and say HST in 90 days? Uh, shorting equities is to get into a put. How do you short a crypto? Uh, so Ask Die Player. Thank you, Die Player, for the question. You can get on BitMEX, Deribit, Bybit. This Bybit is what I recommend. Um, if you if you want to trade on the exchange where I go long and short cryptocurrencies, I recommend Bybit. Uh, link is in the description down below. If you want to support the channel, don't have to. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, you can go long and short trading futures contracts. Um, you can also, uh, Kraken allows you to go long and short. Bitfinex, I don't recommend anybody trades on Bitfinex, allows you to go long and short. Um, there's actually quite a few, uh, but I prefer trading the futures contracts. There's more liquidity. Robert Kirk says, could be worth setting limit buys for crazy low prices. Bots sometimes screw up. Yeah, it is a shot in the dark, but do you have to lose? But what do you have to lose? Yeah, those are called stank bids. We set them sometimes. Do I have a scanner to identify cryptos in play? Actually, no, I, I do all my trading manually. I do my daily scan. I apply my strategy. I just look. I mean, literally, like, you guys see, like, I like ask me to look at any chart. and I'll tell you immediately whether I can go long or short on it takes me five seconds. I just look at the chart and I know. Not because I'm magic, although I've been doing this for a long time, so I have kind of an advanced suite of discretionary rules that I can apply. But again, it just comes naturally when you have a strong system in play. Because your system tells you exactly what to do. That's exactly what we teach people how to do in the course. But no, I don't have a scanner. 
No Bit Phoenix. No. Uh, TRX USDT. Um, Could have gone long on this candle right here. And we would have captured some of the 22.19% profit potential. Uh, let's see here. This candle, we would have been out back at break even. So our stop at break even would have triggered, but we would have definitely taken the profit on the way up pursuant to Quadrigo. 29, 30, and 32. So yeah, we would have taken profit at 29, 30, and 32. Yeah, so we captured, um, I mean, 80% of that. Uh, nothing to do on TRX right now. If the daily closes like this, this is actually a continuation signal. So we could go long on TRX again. Uh, daily needs to close like this though. So this is actually going to go on the watch list for tonight. Uh, Anita Coach Kimi says, Justin, I tried Bybit and it was awful. I don't know, man. I've never had those issues. And almost 95% and of the people that I talk to have zero issues with Bybit. Uh, Bitmex is absolutely terrible. I've never had a single connection issue with Bybit whatsoever. Every time I want to trade, Bybit works. Whenever I want to trade on Bitmex, it seems like I can never. The scanner is between the ears, says Vitam. Can you show how you would use average true range to do that? Yeah, sure. So what is the average true range? So, whoa, 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 baby. Okay. Let's look at, where were we? TRX, sorry. So here's uh, here's where the signal is generated on the close of this candle. Candle closes at not 2727. And where is the average true range? The average true range is not not 173819. So we take profit at not not 173.89. We take profit at not not 173.89 times two times three. Tink, tink, tink. Besides Kraken for United States resident, what other exchange can I use for margin? Bybit with a VPN. Link in the description down below for their Winscribe VPN. Highly recommend it. New to crypto, trying to learn. It is against the law of the land. Any pump by Zerp is dumped within five minutes. <laughs> Jose Canet, I like you, brother. XRP cannot be pumped. All right, it's 2 o'clock, guys. It's time to jet. Let's do the lightning round right here with Zen BTC because that was a good question. So Zen has been counter-trading the alts. Looks like a regular chart to me, my good friend. Uh, we're allowed to get in along on Zen right here. Let's just go through Zen real quick. We'll talk about the system. We're allowed to get in along on Zen right here. Out on this candle if we haven't taken profits already. Let's see here. We're allowed to get back in here. Take profit here, take profit here. We're allowed to get back into Zen here. Take profit here. And it pretty much had a short for all this. Here's where it told us to go short. That one's probably a loss, but this one's not. That's a good short. And then we're allowed to get back into Zen right here. That's an immediate loss on the next candle, but then we can get back in on the very next candle and capture all of that. Take profit here. Take profit here. For using Quadrigo, we most likely would have been hitting more. 
And right now it's telling us do nothing. All of this system tells you don't do shit. Not all of this is worth trading. The good moves are worth trading, and that's what the system is designed to capture, is the good movements worth putting a position on. There's not always a position to be had. Turd Ferguson, thank you so much, brother. So, hey, Midwest, Midwest attempts, just to put that down a little bit clearer, whatever the value of ATR is... Utilize multiples of that added on to the closing price of the signal of the candle that generated the signal. All right, guys, let's slide on over here. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. I have been your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. If you guys have any questions, comments, thoughts, sarcastic remarks, opinions, or death threats. Leave them in the comment section down below, as well as your personal email and address if it's a death threat. I'll come talk to you about it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Hopefully you guys go on to have a fantastic day. Make sure to trade safely. Make sure if this is your first time to the channel to hit the subscribe button and the bell because we are here live every single day. We also appreciate it if you nudge the thumbs up button. For those of you on YouTube, if you're over on Twitch or DLive, the follow and subscription is always appreciated. And if you're on Facebook, make sure to share this message to all your friends instead of a cat video, guys. We appreciate that. Uh, if you guys would like access to our proprietary indicators, our, P our Pathways to Profit course, our educational material, our private Discord community, as well as our trade setup signals, mentors, and analysts. You guys can, of course, check the link up at the top of the screen, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Trade safely, guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one.
Thank you.